In today's episode, we unbox this monster. <laughs> Gloomhaven, Jaws of the Lion. You're listening to the Beans and Dice Podcast. A podcast about how we game. Hey folks, I'm Carlos. I'm Rob. And we are the Beans and Dice Podcast, a podcast about how, how we, we game. game. And today we're going to as quickly as we can, yeah. unbox Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion just to see what the components are. We're not going to get into any spoilers or cracking open any boxes. We're going to focus on just showing the components, what's in the box, so that you know what you're getting when you buy it. Now, Rob is a huge Gloomhaven nerd. Yeah, yeah, I've been playing. Flat uh, out. Got my group. There's three of us in uh, my current play group. Uh, mm -hmm. This is my first time through, but we are just a couple of scenarios away from uh, ending the, the regular game. We're over probably 100 hours of content in, I would say. So we've had uh, about a little over a year of playing. But this review will go, or this uh, unboxing will go much quicker than the full Gloomhaven, because this box is only about half the size. So Half the size, but I think on two-thirds the price so i oh, don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah. the ratio of price to game is there <laughs> yeah well uh, yeah. but this is the entry point as is uh if, if you've heard anything about this game you've heard that this is the ideal way to learn gloomhaven and specifically the first five scenarios uh supposedly ramp you up and uh, teach you a little bit of the game at a time so it's not nearly as intimidating as the as the full thing but let's take a look see what's in the box yeah this thing is pretty i'm looking forward to this one uh, I know I played Gloomhaven with you and yep. your group, yep. and uh, your group is a, a, a little different than my, than my groups tend to be. Yeah. Your, your group yeah. is more of a, a Euro, Euro player yeah. mm -hmm. centric group, mm -hmm. where I'm more of a uh, role playing. So you know, we just didn't fit. So I kind of mm -hmm. bowed out of that group. So I'm hoping that this is going to be able to provide me some of that little bit of Gloomhaven experience that you guys get to enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, but more in my style. So we shall mm -hmm. see. Right off the bat, when you open the uh, box here, um, come to this little camera here for the uh, for the header, but it says... Uh, uh, oops, On the table. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see if I can slide it over. Uh, there we go. Welcome to Gloomhaven. It says, stop with an exclamation point. Read this before going doing anything else. And so this is going to be just some general, uh, looks like organization, looks like it's giving you some tips on how to put things together, uh, how to punch, uh, and how to organize some of the pieces. Uh, on the other side, it uh, looks like just a quick explanation of uh, what some of the different pieces and components do in the game. And then uh, just says here, very important, do not open boxes A, B, C, and D. So uh, these are some of the uh, hidden content in the game. So this just gives we you We will not open that stuff. We're just going to focus on showing you what's in the what's the main contents right and the references here watch it played uh rodney uh in his videos uh he has done a series uh kind of running through the first five uh kind of ramping up learning scenarios tutorial scenarios for the game and so there's a little advertisement here and a little barcode to, to connect i assume to his uh youtube page to watch his playthrough of the first few scenarios so yep. all right and the next thing we have is the learn to play guide we, uh, we won't get too uh, in detail with uh, this guide, but uh, learn to play. Um, it's going to show you, looks like a little bit about uh, how to sticker the game board as you move along through the game. Uh, it's going to give you some game mechanics. Um, looks like it explains here uh, so the setup, uh, the play area for the game, uh, how to position the tiles and the monsters, and then how to set up the... Uh, the board, which in this one is not tiles, it's actually a book that we'll get to in a moment that has the actual scenarios and the game boards in it. Uh, we have information here on playing the game, some of the rules for the game, and let me just kind of fast forward here. Uh, looks like this Learn to Play is, uh, the last page is titled Final Rules, and uh, looks like it's 30 pages, so uh, it's a nice glossy uh, rule book. Um, just kind of flipping through knowing uh, what I do about the game already. Uh, looks like it covers everything here pretty succinctly. This is probably a little skinnier than the original uh, rule book. Um, but well, here's why. Because this book here has the glossary. I like this. So uh, alphabetical order from A to Z. You got all the different different terms that are used in the game. Ah, uh, nice touch. And just organizes them for you. It's almost like uh, what Fantasy Flight Games does mm -hmm. with their rules references where they organize it alphabetically. Mm -hmm. Just makes it easy to find. Yeah, definitely a nice touch here. So if you're looking just to find out how movement works 
or how to claim an objective or monster movement. Uh, you can just flip through, looks like alphabetically here, uh, leveling up a character, line of sight. You can just come to some, uh, some quick uh, reference points and, and find the information quickly. Uh, this particular book also is 30 pages, so it's exactly the same. Uh, looks like at the end here, uh, similar to the uh, standard or the uh, base Gloomhaven, there's a checklist of uh, some things that you can check off, some one-time advantages that you get as you play through, um, and then the requirements for, for checking those off. So, pretty and then, neat. Uh, next we have a uh, supplemental scenario book. I'm not certain uh, what that goes to. And but it's wire bound here on the edge. That's a nice touch. That's something that's definitely different than what the, uh, the regular Gloomhaven had. There was nothing like that in there. Uh, okay, and I've seen some about this. Again, we're not going to show too much of this here, but this is the, there is a main map book that we'll probably get to That's in a moment. this one here, the scenario book. Okay, so this book is going to have, and I'll just maybe open to the first page here just to kind of uh, show, but the uh, each one of these scenario books is going to have uh, some information, a little bit of story to read that tells you what's going on in this one. It's going to have your objectives. Uh, it's going to have your conclusion if you beat the level, a little thing that you read that tells you what ha uh, what you get. Uh, it kind of wraps up that little piece of the story. And again, very different from this version than the original Gloomhaven was that in the original Gloomhaven, you got a box full of tiles and you had to build each level. Uh, one of the complaints about that was that it was uh, kind of generic. They had to make the tiles generic because they had to fit multiple different scenarios with the same basic tiles. Uh, the one nice thing about the book is that they, uh, the, they're in the spiral bound book here and they are very specific. The artwork and everything is very specific to that particular scenario. But then the supplemental scenario book, which was the other book that we grabbed first, uh, has just... Um, uh, little pieces that you can add on. Let me see if I can find the one that matches this one. So if the uh, uh, scenario or this first one may not have one, but they have uh, another book that you could maybe add on next to it, and you oh, open okay, it up. so it gives you the feeling of exploring into a new room, right? Or make a larger map. So it, nice. it might go down on the bottom. It might go on the side. And this this is a big reason why this book here is a big reason why I decided to make this purchase. Yep. To to buy this game. Uh, the idea, and, and this is not a new idea to me, mm -hmm. uh, this idea of a book that provides the map, uh, I found it in, first time I encountered it, was in Stuffed Fables. Stuffed Fables, right. Um, yep. From uh, Plat Hat Games. Yep. So Stuffed Fables has the book where you open it and the map is laid out for you. It just made it so easy to play a game. Your game board is uh, actually We also the map. found it in uh, Forgotten Waters. Yep. You know, it has the flip book that gets you from one adventure to the next. Near and Far, I believe, the the follow-up to Above and Below also had the same kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a real popular thing right now. People go into this. Uh, again, much easier than the original Gloomhaven, which was, like I said, a big box of tiles. And uh, that took up a lot of space, made the game a lot heavier. So this is really a unique idea that they brought over to Gloomhaven. So This is great. So very cool. Yep. And nice wire bound. Uh, we got yep. some stickers for you. Yep. Again, we won't try to get too spoilery, so I won't get too much detail. But these are stickers that as you explore the map, you're going to stick things on to uh, find locations or show that you've discovered locations. We've got some punch outs here of uh, the money tiles uh, and the damage markers. I'll uh, just get an idea here. We'll punch a few of these. These are nice, uh, thick cardboard. Um, yeah, I agree with you. They are thick cardboard. It's, it, you know, they're not as nice as like a linen finish token. Yeah. Right. Um, the the cardboard, the chipboard that it's on is is a is an okay chipboard. It's a little a little more malleable, a little softer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's, it's not your top quality, top tier component tokens, mm -hmm. uh, but they're going to be I mean, with as many as they have. Right. It, it's that's always been a thing with Gloomhaven is there's lots of tokens, there's lots of little bits, and so for cost wise. Uh, they probably uh, doing a whole lot more production on on the, uh, the these tokens would would maybe be a little over the top, but they are they are definitely thick. They seem fairly sturdy, but as you said, they the quality of them. It seems like if you got them wet or something, they might uh, just kind of fall right, apart. Right, you get but, that water marking on there. Yeah. I mean, and you should never get any components wet. Right, but you, yeah. you would hope for you know something that can resist it a little longer than a, an instant wetting. Uh, we're showing on the GoPro some of these uh, items here. So these are the monsters. These are monsters. Because everything's on standees in this game. Right. Yeah, everything goes into a little standee. You usually have regular monsters and elite monsters. And in the game, it's just differentiated by either a yellow base or a white base. Yep. And so... Um, I am for the standees. Yeah, yeah. I am for it. Yeah, this is one. And again, this, again, the number of monsters and things you face in this game, if they were to do minis for something like this, the cost would just be... And, and what I'm finding is, as a miniature wargamer, I guess we're going deeper than an unboxing here, folks. Um, in a miniature wargaming 
which is what I do and I really enjoy. I thought when the world of board gaming would catch up and do a bunch of miniatures that everything would be awesome. But what I found is in with board games like this, because of the cost of miniatures, you end up with the same miniatures over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it's always the goblins and it's always the skeletons and it's always the same creatures over and over again. With this, it allows you to play with a variety of different looking monsters without all that extra cost. So I am all for the silhouettes using the standees. Yeah, and we won't get into too much here. There are uh, plates and plates here of monsters and and uh, things that you're going to face in the game. There are some some boss monsters I've noticed on a couple of these punch boards, uh, which again is something from the regular Gloomhaven. They're going to be unique. They're not numbered like the uh, the numerous minions that you face. But... This is this right here, Rob. This is this deserves a little extra attention. Here. Uh, yes, this yeah, this is uh, actually very well done. Uh, this is the main. It's fully wrapped all the way around, so it's 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 a piece of chipboard cardboard, right? Yeah. But it's fully wrapped with linen on the back, and then glossy on the front for the map. And I believe that's where those stickers go. Yep, that's what I was gonna say. This is the main uh, game board that you're actually playing on in the game. And so the uh, sticker sheet, uh, when you're playing the game and you uh, discover a new location, it's gonna have grid coordinates. You can see on here A, B, C, D, E, F along one side, and then one through nine on the other. And it's gonna tell you. And uh, actually, you, most of the stickers have uh, grid lines on it, and so you're going to match them up and, and stick them on the sticker board. So one thing to know is that the, they make a set of peelable um, stickers that you can take off. The base game does not come with those. Normally, they're kind of pretty permanent stickers that you go on. But if you ever think that you will reset and replay the game, even though there are hours and hours and hours of play, you know, in the game just going through it one time, but if you think you're going to play through it again, uh, there are some peelable stickers that they have that uh, stick on that you can take off to reset it if you want. But uh, that is that is very nice board. Yeah, this board. I, know is very, I talked a little well bit done. about the the punch t the punch tokens. Um, uh, not the same. Not the case for this. This this map is uh, well done. Very well done. Yeah. Nice. Map. All right, so nice. now we open these boxes, right? Yeah, yeah, let's open them is all. It, no. <laughs> we just, is that what we do? We open yeah. these boxes? And we don't, uh, we'll, we'll show them very quickly. I don't know why some people will even put the camera up top oh, because there's we'll, so many of them. We'll even find these uh, spoilery so we won't dwell too long on these. They but... find these images yes. spoilery? Yeah, Are they, you kidding they can me? They start giving you ideas about what the different classes do. So, but it's uh, in the box. Yeah. Oh, man. So. You. <laughs> Hey folks, <laughs> but these are actually in this version. Uh, these are the four basic ones that you start with. Um, so they're actually these are, are classes, right? Right. There are only four classes in this game, as opposed to the regular Gloomhaven, which I believe had uh, was at least twelve, might have been sixteen in the uh, base box. And so there were four, I believe, that you started with in the regular Gloomhaven, and then the others were stacked separately. And those again were kind of some people felt those were spoilery to look ahead. But so we got. Uh... Component trays. Different than the regular Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven did not come with any kind of component tray, really, other than just some uh, molding in the in the main box. Well, that's nice. These wheels are pre-assembled. Okay. Well, yeah. he's missing one. So. Uh, so <laughs> partially pre-assembled. Partially pre-assembled. <laughs> yeah. so somebody's missing a wheel. Shipping, it looks like it may have come loose. I or, hope so. Are we short one? We will find out. Yeah. <laughs> well, in any case, though, you know, if you played four players, then you would need all four dials. But Standees. What's the basis for the standees? You have the yellow and the white. Got some cards here. These are uh, the boss cards. Uh, so these uh, dictate the uh, the movement of the, or, sorry, the actions of the uh, of the monsters and the minions. So this is the the stack of cards for them. Uh, looks like the the monster cards. Yep, these are the monster cards. So they rotate. They have a side <laughs> zero, one, two, three, and the other side four, five, six, I believe. And uh, you flip them and use them four, five, six, and seven. Uh, so depending on your strength of your party, you move those to the appropriate levels. Uh, here are the uh, holders for these sleeves. They go in so they only show the uh, the monster at the level that which you uh, happen to be fighting it at. Looks like there's some card dividers. Again, this is new from uh, uh, for this uh, version. The original Gloomhaven did not have these dividers for the box, but these uh, looks like you can put into the box to divide the different types of cards. So that's which is nice. Yep. Because uh, the, the box itself, and we'll slide this up here, we'll make some room. Got a bunch of baggies here for you guys. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it when it comes with baggies. Stack of baggies. Uh, we'll come to the top view, and you can see the inside of the box here comes with an insert. And so you got your beautiful insert, which I, I pulled it out already. And there's nothing underneath it. Ah. Um, <laughs> so it looks like I am missing a wheel. Yeah. I will have to contact the publisher to Cephalo Fair Games. Yeah. Yep. See if they can send me a wheel. So we have some event cards here. 
All right, so uh, we're, we're into the box, into the tray, and, and I'm loving the way it holds all the components. Yep. Uh, Rob was telling me, don't open these boxes. Yeah, these, these four with the red seals on them, the A, B, C, and D, those are the do not opens. And then these are the starter, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume miniatures. Yep, miniatures. Um, inside of these. Yep. Because I remember that from the original that match the starting classes that we just showed you a little earlier. And then these are the tuck boxes. You get that legacy game feel mm -hmm. in this... 50 something dollar game set up here. Absolutely. Uh, here are the damage cards that come in the game. Yep, so in, in Gloomhaven you don't roll dice. You have a deck of damage cards that you can modify as you play. Uh, you can make changes to it, add hits, subtract misses. These are item cards, so these are gonna be different items that you can buy in the Gloomhaven uh, uh, shop or store there. So these are different ways you can upgrade. There's weapons, there's uh, helmets, there's armor, those types of things in there. Uh, these are, looks like, uh, at the beginning of each scenario, normally you draw two objectives. So you keep one and you uh, throw one away. Uh, things you're trying to complete just for your personal character during the game. So there's a stack of those objective cards. And then these are city event cards. In regular Gloomhaven, you had city events and road events uh, in the Jaws of the Lion. It's just city events from what I understand. I believe that's all that's in here. It looks like that's all that these are. Uh, so every time you're in Gloomhaven, after you complete a scenario, uh, whether you won or lost, uh, you can do a city event. Uh, city events at regular Gloomhaven tended to be beneficial. So uh, this is a stack of, uh, you'll mix these up and these will come up in a random order. So, Now what's your excitement level to play this one? I know you're still in right. your Gloomhaven campaign. Yep, we're working on the main campaign. Uh, like I say, we're only a couple scenarios away, maybe just really one or two scenarios away from wrapping that up. And then we're going to move into the first uh, expansion, Forgotten Circles on that. I am excited about this one. Partially, if uh, you know, if you want to try to run through it, I want to. But as you mentioned, my my main game group is very cerebral. Uh, we're very thinky. We're very plotting. I know <laughs> you are quite the opposite. From the time you played with us, you like to kick run the door in, down, just punch kill the monster, the so, steal the treasure. So I'm interested. Next, I'm interested to see how Gloomhaven plays that way because I've I've got like I say, 100 hours plus in with the overthinking it part of it. So I, I'm actually pretty excited. And there's definitely some cool uh, changes in this box. I'm really excited about the uh, the new maps uh, being in the book instead of the tiles. I think that's going to make a huge difference. So yeah, definitely uh, definitely interested in playing this version. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear it, Rob. Yep. Uh, folks, this is the unboxing component show off of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Line. I'm Carlos. I'm Rob. And we are the Beans and Dice Podcast, a podcast about how we game. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. We will see you on the next one. Stay safe, folks. Thanks for watching. Keep on gaming. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for watching the Beans and Dice Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs>